What's up, y'all? It's Calvin here, and I want to holler at you guys about a situation that has been going on with the Hungarian uh, government. Um, the uh, European Union and the European Council, they are not very happy with this government because of a law that they recently passed that, in their own words, they say that they are protecting their children. But um, for whatever reason, the EU and the European Council, they are very upset with them but i uh was reading into it and i happened to come across an article by a guy named john pfeffer all right and uh we are gonna go through parts of this article out here and as always i will leave links below f for uh you guys to examine these things for yourselves all right but uh it starts off it says hungary's authoritarian leader victor orban Loves a good enemy. He has lashed out against Eurocrats in Brussels. He has cynically demonized immigrants to boost his own political standing at home. All right, but now he have made gone. Excuse me, but now he may have gone too far with his attack on an unlikely and universally unlike group of people, pedophiles. All right, and a lot of you are probably thinking to yourself, why is this a problem? You'll see. Oh, and uh, by the way, if I didn't mention the the name of of this article, is the global right wing bizarre? Excuse me, the global right wing's bizarre obsession with pedophilia. Moving on, it says, last month the Hungarian Parliament passed legislation increasing sentences for those convicted of sexually abusing minors. All right, and it says. Ordinarily, such a move wouldn't cause much, if any, backlash, but the Hungarian right wing has used its campaign against pedophilia to target homosexuals and transgender community. The bill includes a ban on any depiction or promotion of homosexuality to anyone under the age of 18. What's the problem? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, why is this such a problem? But... It goes on to say that it is part of Orban's long-standing effort to turn Hungary into a bastion of Christian conservatism. All right, so I, I guess, you know, that is a bad thing in their eyes. All right, but still, it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, what's the bad part about um, keeping these homosexual and sexual things limited to people who are 18 and over. Like, it, you know what I mean? It still doesn't have anything to do with that. So it goes on down here to say, that excuse me john pfeffer is going on to try to say that um they are trying to enshrine the country's constitution that marriage is only between man and woman which by definition that is what it is it doesn't matter how you feel about it by definition that's what it is it's man and woman um it's been that way for a very very long time you know what i'm saying what a man and a man do and what a woman and a woman do that's something else it it's not marriage but you know some people they don't they don't you know once the facts don't fit what they like then all of a sudden the party's no fun moving on though it says that the european union of which hungary is a member is fighting back now keep in mind they're fighting back against someone who would increase laws on someone who would sexually abuse minors and they would keep anything sexual from anyone who's up under the age of 18, all right? And <laughs> the European Union, of which Hungary is a member, is fighting back, okay? So this is what they're fighting back against, people who are protecting children. And it says, the EU is a place where you will be free to be who you are and love whomever you want, even if it's a child, apparently, and then it's noted, and uh, this was uh, said by the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, all right? And she said that I would use all the powers of the commission, meaning the European Commission, all right? And uh, real quick, we're going to look into some of those powers that she has, all right? And uh, all right, there's an article called uh, Europe's Military Drift Causes Alarm. And also be reading from another article that is called uh, Financial Management. And this is on the European Commission's uh, website. All right, now let's, let's uh, get to it.
it goes on to say that a spokesperson for the European Commission listed products, projects that are likely to be funded under the defense, including drone technology, ground-based precision strike capabilities, and a new generation of ground, air, and naval combat platforms. Okay, and then it says the long-term goal is to make sure those technologies are created in the EU, the spokesperson said, to be strategically autonomous, not to rely on other countries, and to strengthen our capacity to defend ourselves and, of course, European citizens. All right, and now we see there that that is a part of their uh, powers and moving on to see some of their other powers from a financial standpoint is that all right now you jump over here to the financial management uh section of the european commission's website all right and it says although structural funds are part of the eu budget the way they are spent is based on a system of shared responsibility between the european commission and national authorities all right the commission negotiates and approves programs proposed by EU countries and allocates all resources. OK, so if they want to deny somebody some funding, they could do that. OK, so anyway, shooting back over to this article here. All right. Where it is talking about the defense funds that they have for military capabilities and things of that nature. She said that she was going to use all of her power. All right. All right. So as you can already see, they control funds, you know, what I'm saying for all the European Union countries, which Hungary is one. And as well as that, they have things that they are working with the defense funds for drone technology, ground based precision strikes, which could easily uh, work itself into a assassination type situation. And then they've got a new generation of ground, air, and naval combat platforms. All of this is at her disposal. And this woman is talking about using everything that is within her power on a guy who simply passed a law that would punish people who sexually abuse minors harder and put these in place to protect children under the age of 18. Okay? That's all he did, and now he's got to deal with the might of the European Commission, just like that. Moving right along, um, and it goes on to say that in uh, John Pfeffer's article, all right, it says that uh, the trafficking of children is a serious global problem. Every year, thousands of children are sold for purposes of sexual exploitation. All right, but it says the far right is more interested in insane conspiracy theories enforcing its antiquated notions of gender and sexuality than dealing with the very real problem. All right, so they've already put a law in place to punish people harder and to keep them from around children and their influence, not just them, but also their influence. But he isn't doing anything to solve the problem. Okay, with this article that he is writing, he is trying to um, group Victor Orban and basically the Hungarian government into a group of conspiracy theorists and he's also trying to group them with uh, the a group called uh, QAnon all right and um and so he is um bringing up a what he calls a conspiracy theory uh called blood libel where it's basically Jews are killing children and extracting their uh, their uh, blood then it also goes on to say that QAnon group, they basically believe the same thing. Moving on, um, it goes on to say, according to another conspiracy theory that has spread throughout Latin America, the fictitious pedophile activist movement is supposedly trying to worm its way into the LGBT community to normalize child molestation. All right. And the the uh, this article's author is trying to say that these are the two main attacks of the that occur with the reputation of the LGBT um, community, you know what I mean? So um, we, we're going to see if that's so far-fetched and if this is a conspiracy theory, that they're not trying to wiggle their way in. And if you see here, we have a young kid. He's 11. His name is Desmond N Napole, 
all right? And uh, he's 11 years old, and he was on Good Morning America dancing on a stage and dancing and stripping for dollars f <laughs> in a gay bar, all right, that was supported by the LGBT, okay? And um, th they are proud to say that they are queer-owned and operated, all right? This is, a once again, an LGBT bar. All right, and as you can see, he's sitting across from Michael Strahan on Good Morning America, okay? <laughs> sitting in drag. This is an 11-year-old boy, okay? Now, uh, this is pedophilia right in front of your face, but uh, if it was a situation where there was a woman up on stage that was dancing for those guys uh, from a sexual standpoint, and that's what this is all about, sex, uh, that would be a heterosexual situation, if it was a guy up there that was stripping and all that stuff like that, that would be a gay situation. But this was a boy, and he did it right in front of everybody, right on Good Morning America. That That is pedophilia. That's what it looks like outside the bedroom, you know what I mean? And uh, even with that kid in drag sitting on stage like that, that's what it looks like outside of, of the bedroom. And to either further the point that uh, there's a agenda for kids in the... LGBT, which, I mean, the bug is already out about that. I mean, they've got school programs and Black Lives Matter with the, the transgender movement. It's already out there. But if you go to Desmond's own page, uh, when it goes to his, like, um, uh, about section or something like that, um, it tells you that uh, teenager Desmond Naples is a multi-awarded LGBTQ advocate, all right? Outspoken gay youth gender fluid, editorial, runway model, so on and so forth. And then you come over here and it says Desmond is also the founder of his own. It has it uh, says there, but that should be his, all right? So uh, Desmond is also the founder of his own LGBTQ youth and drag kid houses. So they have houses with these kids, you know what I mean? And um, I think at the time that he was like, established his first drag house or a drag club he was like 11 years old if i'm not mistaken and i think there's articles that even say that he was 10 okay um even though it may have been his idea or whatever in order to actually make that happen that took adults to do that and it just seems like most people just walk right past that fact you know what i mean it's like those are adults behind the scenes just keeping the lights on in that place paying the bills all of that stuff so these kids can can meet up for a sexually themed type situation you know what i mean but if you let this art this uh author right here this uh john pfeffer you know what i mean say it that is just conspiracy theory all right and uh there's a lots of psychologists and all kinds of people. There are people on TED Talk, and they're all saying the same things. They're trying to rationalize this thing, man. And it's all about the repetition when it comes to it. Because it is, I mean, it is crazy. But this is how these people are rationalizing it. And all right, so moving on. Um, and it says... In this article, uh, John Pfeffer is trying to say that these conspiracy theories are nonsense, all right? And then it goes on to say, but again, pedophilia itself is not imaginary, all right? And it goes on to say that the New Yorker recently ran a story about a renowned sexologist who managed somehow to convince the German government to place young boys in a foster home run by pedophiles. And this was correct. If you click here on the uh, link that says ran a uh, story, it'll take you to that specific article. There was a guy named Helmut Kentler, okay? And he was the one that ran the experiment, okay? And he was one of the most influential, excuse me, one of the most influential sexologists in Germany. And he had to have some influence on him to be able to talk somebody into, uh, you know, letting some children be adopted by some pedophile. He was either that or he had some buddies. But that's what he did, though. But um, this was called the Kentler Experiment, okay? And it began in the late 60s, and Kentler had placed neglected children in foster homes run by pedophiles. The experiment was authorized and financially supported by the Berlin Senate, okay? So this was government, okay? And, and this is no different than the guy Albert... Um, uh, Kinsley, you know what I'm saying? He was a professor, if I'm not mistaken, at the University of 
Indiana, and I actually did a podcast on it. I will put it up there and be sure to leave a link below to a check that out. Um, he didn't exactly do this type of uh, ex experiment, but his was, in my opinion, a little worse. You know what I'm saying? But this is all bad. But like Kinsley was, Kinsley was something else. He was able to shape the uh, the current pedophile laws that we have now. That's why uh, a lot of these guys can uh, do what they do and be able to get right out of jail with slaps on on the wrist. That was all set up by Mr. Kinsley, all right? And they even made a movie about this guy, okay? Anyways, moving on um, with the Kindler experiment, all right? Uh, we, we already covered that the Berlin Senate was aware of this situation and uh, allowed it to happen. And uh, moving on to a, to a different article, uh, this particular article right here, it's called inside the secret experiment that purposely left orphan children with pedophiles, all right? And this is a, a little bit further about the Kentler experiment, all right? It says, in many cases of the experiment, children between the ages of 13 and 15, many of which were drug addicts and prostitutes, were placed in the care of pedophiles. Kentler thought Excuse me. Kentler's thought process was that the sexual experiences should have a positive impact on the personal development of neglected boys. All right. I'm, I'm going to read that again. OK. Kentler's thought process was that the sexual experiences, meaning the, the sexual experiences of 13 through 15 year old boys should have a positive impact on the personal development of neglected boys. This is absolutely crazy, man. So, moving on. Um, it says, in 1997, Kentler, who spent much of his highly controversial career con con continuing to advocate for the sexual rights of children, would take his findings further by declaring, I have found in the vast majority of the experience that pederastic relationships, and for those of you, if those of you who do not know what a pederast is, it is a man who, you know, loves, uh, has sexual activity with young boys. And I'll put the, uh, the definition up there f for you guys to see. But uh, anyways, uh, the, uh, the paragraph says, I have found... In the vast majority of the experience that pederastic relationships can have a very positive effect on the personality development of a boy. All right. Once again, pederast, somebody who has sexual activity with boys and youth. OK. And this guy, <laughs> a sexologist, feels like that these relationships can have a very positive effect on the personality development of a boy especially if the pederasty is a true mentor of the boy so it's okay for him to have sex with him if he you know teaches him multiplication or something like that you know what i mean or helps him with his curveball uh, but this is the mind state though you know what i mean that I, I really want you guys to look at you know what i'm saying above everything just look at the mind state look at the will that drives these people you know what i mean and anyways, uh, moving on down here, um, it goes on to say, after Kentler's experiment was made public, city authorities enlisted Teresa Nitwig from Gutengen University to do further research and determine the extent of the government's involvement in, in the, uh, the uh, program. All right. And it says, men who have been convicted of sexual contact with minors were appointed by the Berlin leadership as guardians, children and young people who lived on the street before that had to pay for a warm bed, good food, and clean clothes engaging in sexual relationships with their caregivers, said Nitwig. Goes on to say that Nitwig's tag was not an easy one as Kentler took very few notes, okay, because this was supposed to be an experiment and most people, they take a lot of notes. And you'll see with Kinsey, man, Alfred Kinsey, he took a lot of notes and... Whew, Man, doing research on that stuff was very, very hard. But at any rate, it uh, goes on to say, and as Kentler took very few notes and basic details such as how many children were handed over to pedophiles and how much funding the city provided are still unknown. The investigation is also being further impeded by the local government, I bet. 
which is withholding data and documents. Yeah, I, I, I bet they is withholding data and documents because I, in order for them to okay that, I'm quite sure that some of them were swinging by those pedophile houses. I, I, I'm certain of it. Who else would approve something like that? You know what I mean? So, anyways, uh, and real quick before I forget, uh, there's a guy named Henry Hay or Howard Hay or something like that. Uh, not quite sure on his first name. His last name is Hay. But back in the early pride marches and things of that nature, this guy would be at these marches, okay, with a sign that says Nambla stands with us. And there's also other photographs of uh, gay marches in the 70s, early 80s and things of that nature that were for Nambla. All right. So, uh, you know, this this stuff that like, you know, gay people, they don't want anything to do with kids and stuff like every time you turn around the LGBT, they're around children. Okay, and they do not like the family structure. That's another reason uh, in which we will be getting to shortly uh, that they don't like the Hungarian government is that you know, they want the power of teaching their children, educating them about sex to stay with the family. Um, just check out the title of this particular article right here. OK, and um, even though. The government is giving the parents power. The, they have school teachers that are saying that they're going to openly defy that and not care what the parents say, but they're just going to do what they want to do. And what you have to understand is that this is how it is worldwide. These these people are everywhere your children are. OK, so just want to put that out there, you know, and uh, the European Commission does not want that. That infuriates them, you know what I'm saying? Because it is very important for them to get to this particular generation. They are pushing very hard. That's why they got little Nas and all these people like that, you know what I'm saying? And um, uh, something else that I was going to say. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, before I forget, th there was a lady named Masha Gessen, okay? And this was a while back. I believe, I don't know, like 2015, 16, something like that. Mm -hmm. It could be further back than that, but she is uh, very well respected in in the uh, uh, lesbian community, gay community, like whatever. And uh, she's an author, if I'm not mistaken. And she also used to write for a paper, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, but she made a statement once saying that the the gay community they ultimately they want to do away with the family unit you know what i'm saying like no 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 a gay marriage no lesbian marriage no straight marriage just you know just basically a hot mess you know what i mean and that was the same thing that was echoed by the people from uh black lives matter you know what i'm saying it's like once you really get to the heart core of of these people man they are serious serious pedophiles and they are staunchly against Anything godly, righteous, anything like that, you know what I mean? You know, like it, it, it just can't be. So, anyways, moving on, I'll be sure to leave the uh, links below because there's actually video evidence of her uh, saying this. You know what I'm saying? But uh, be sure to look that lady up though, Masha Gessen. She's a Jewish chick. Moving on, um, with this article um, saying that the hung Hungarian media. media over the past 20 to 30 years, there have been a total of 32 cases of possible sexual uh, abuse by clerics and other employees of the Hungarian Catholic Church. All right. Erfie says the true number could be far higher. All right. And he's trying to use this to say that the Hungarian government and the media, they're all hypocrites and things of that nature. But if you take a look at Victor Orban, all right? He has been the prime minister of Hungary since 2010. And before that, he also was the prime minister from 1998 to 2002. So in all of that time, he never made these kind of laws, all right, that, you know, was putting... No kind of pressure on, you know, gay people, pedophiles, none of that. And everything was fine. But all of a sudden, when he puts these laws in place, now he, he's a huge hypocrite. It's just, you know what I mean? So on and so forth. But they had years and years up under this guy, you know what I mean, to complain about it. 
And they could have easily came out and say, like, what took you so long to put these laws in place? But that's not what they said. You know what I'm saying? And they're, like, trying to say that, uh, you know, they're not punishing the people in, in, in the uh, church and, you know, things of that nature. But if that was not the intent, why would they increase the time for these sexual crimes that were done uh, against minors? You know what I'm saying? Why would they put the laws in place to keep them away from children if the objective was to actually bring them closer to children? It doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? And why is the European Union and the European Council so upset with this guy? It's because I think he's putting things in place that are really protecting these children. And a pedophile with a military, you know, uh, they feel like they can do whatever they want to. And that's exactly what you're seeing with the European Commission and the European Union. You know what I mean? So, uh... You know, if you guys thought this was a game or thought this was a joke, man, because they, they did the same thing as Zimbabwe. These people don't do anything new, man. Like, but uh, with the uh, Zimbabwe situation, uh, they used Obama to do that. You know what I mean? It's, but it's the same action, same, same song and dance, man. And they're steadily beating this drum. For pedophilia, and I'm trying to think, uh, is there anything else? Oh, oh yeah, uh, when it comes to this author that uh, wrote this, uh, or excuse me, this uh, writer, but he's also an author as well. But anyways, uh, John Pfeffer, um, if you look him up on Wikipedia, this guy is linked in with George Soros, all right? And uh, he is linked up with him because he's a fellow at the Open Society. And if you click on the Open Society, you'll see that it was founded by George Soros. And I'm pretty sure that if you heard this channel and any other channel, uh, that is saying anything remotely true. You've heard the name George Soros. He, uh, the Open Society is the uh, mother of uh, Black Lives Matter, as well as a whole host of situations that is all about divide and conquer. That is his his, his uh, bread and butter. Like this dude used to be a Nazi and take his fellow Jews uh, valuables and things of that nature. Uh, and and there's actually a 60 minutes. Uh, special about that where he admits these things where he posed as a nazi and this who this john pfeffer is linked in with so uh you know it's always the same cast of characters roads always lead back to the same place man it's, it's always the same thing never nothing new I'm trying to see if i'm forgetting anything uh, but i hope this brings some clarity to you guys and really starts hitting home and resonate just how serious that these people are about the pedophile uh, agenda. You know what I'm saying? They they want to try to lump it in and say, oh, they've got this this uh, gay bill that they're uh, uh, attacking uh, gays, just like they did with uh, Robert Mugabe. And then once you really look into it, you know, it was it was these people that was raping kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it's about. So. Please share this message, you know what I'm saying, because it's it's Europe now, but, you know, it might be somebody in your town, you know what I'm saying, your school that's want to take a stand or whatever at a PTA meeting. Like, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter where you live or where you stay. If, if you stand up against these people, they are very serious and very hardcore about their agenda, and they will seek to destroy you. Ultimately, this is what we're all up against. This is the Pyros. Give us this day our daily bread. Mm -hmm.